Step 3 involves determining the sample size and data gathering. This is the most important step in any research. Study has to be carefully planned. Data collection and measurements made accurately. Otherwise the results of the analysis will be affected. What we commonly say, garbage in, garbage out. We have to determine the sample size needed before we go about collecting the data. To do this, we need to decide on the following. 1. How big a difference we wish to detect. 2. The type of test to perform. Whether we are doing a one-tailed test, or two-tailed test. 3. The level of significant, alpha, to use. Which is usually 1%, or 5%. And 4. The required power of the test. Which is usually 80%. Sample size that is too small may not be powerful enough to detect the difference we wish to detect. This usually results in accepting the no hypothesis when it should be rejected. However, a sample size that is too big will require more time and fun to complete the research. It will also reject the no hypothesis for small differences that may not be of any practical or clinical significance. For example, a hypothesis test may conclude a weight reducing program that reduces the weight of participants by 1 kg to be statistically significant. This could be due to very large sample size, n, making the standard error to be very small. But we all know that a reduction of 1 kg in weight is of no practical or clinical significance. The formula to estimate the sample size for hypothesis testing involving one population mean is shown here. The difference you wish to detect should be of practical or clinical significance. Effect size is the difference you wish to detect, divided by standard deviation. Note that it is divided by standard deviation, not divided by standard error. Effect size is a standard score, indicating the difference in number of standard deviation. We will use the same example on mean weight of adults. Z-critical is determined by the level of significance, alpha, and the type of test, whether it is one-tailed or two-tailed test. For alpha equal to 5% and one-tailed test, Z-critical is 1.645. For a two-tailed test with the same alpha of 5%, Z-critical is 1.96. From the formula, we can see that a two-tailed test requires larger sample size than one-tailed test. For a two-tailed test with smaller alpha of 1%, Z-critical is 2.576. Similarly, we can see that smaller alpha requires larger sample size. Zp is determined by the power of the test. Power of the test is the probability that the null hypothesis will be rejected when the null hypothesis is false. That is if the difference you wish to detect really exists. ZP is not dependent on the type of test, whether it is one-tailed or two-tailed. For a test with power of 80%, ZP is the 80th percentile of the standard score, Z0.80, and is 0.842. For a test with power of 90%, ZP is the 90th percentile, Z0.90, and is 1.282. From the formula, we can see that a test with higher power requires larger sample size. Now we see how to estimate the sample size. Assume we use an alpha of 5% and are doing a two-tailed test. Then Z-critical is 1.96. If we want the test to have 80% power, then ZP is 0.842. Given the standard deviation is 10 kg, and we want to detect a difference of at least 3 kg, then the effect size is difference divided by standard deviation, equal to 3 divided by 10, equal to 0.3 standard deviation. Plug all these numbers into the formula, the sample size n is 87.2. We always round up the number and the estimated sample size needed is at least 88. In practice, 
it is common to draw a sample size larger than that estimated. In this example, we may use a sample size of 90, or even 100. If we want to detect a difference of at least 5 kg, then the effect size is 5 divided by 10, equal to 0.5 standard deviation. The sample size n is 31.4, or 32. From the formula, we can see that detecting a smaller difference requires larger sample size. How do you compute the sample size needed if you totally have no idea about the size of the standard deviation and how big a difference is of practical or clinical significance? You simply choose an effect size you want. As a guide, an effect size of 0.2 standard deviation is considered small, 0.5 is considered medium, and 0.8 or more is large. Note that effect size can be larger than 1. In step 4, we compute the sample and test statistics. If the population standard deviation, sigma, is known, we will make use of a standard normal distribution to compute the test statistic, zs. However, in most cases, the population standard deviation is unknown. And we have to use the student t distributions to compute the test statistic, ts. The t distribution has n minus 1 degrees of freedom, n being the sample size. We will compute the sample mean from the sample obtained. If the population standard deviation is unknown, we will compute the sample standard deviation. This is used as an estimate for the population standard deviation. We then compute the standard error of the sampling distribution, which is standard deviation divided by square root n. The test statistic is given by sample mean minus the population mean stated in the null hypothesis, divided by standard error. Test statistic is denoted by ZS, or TS, depending on whether the population standard deviation is known or not. An example of a computation. Given that the population standard deviation, sigma, for the weight of adults is 10 kg. Since population standard deviation is known, we will compute the test statistic, zs. If the sample size, n, is 25, the standard error for the sampling distribution will be sigma divided by square root n, which is 10 divided by square root 25, giving a standard error of 2 kg. Assume the sample mean obtained from the sample of 25 adults is 73.5 kg. This is higher than the hypothesized mean of 70 kg stated in the null hypothesis. The test statistic, ZS, is given by sample mean minus population mean, divided by standard error, which is 73.5 kg minus 70 kg, divided by 2 kg, giving a test statistic, ZS, of 1.75 which is positive. If the sample mean obtained from the sample of 25 adults is less than 70 kg, the test statistic, ZS, would have a negative instead of positive.